be no peace on earth with all that blooming noise going on. Here you are, boys. Come on, Jim. 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 Come on, Um, horrible caterwauli. Why can't they leave a man in peace? Get on with the work, Cratchit. No, 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 away from me, you scavengers. Blimey, who's he? That's Father Christmas. A plague on Father Christmas. <laughs> And he sends his best to you too, Governor. Yes, sir. Come on, Father Christmas. Hamburg. Thanks for letting young ruffians come in here with their Christmas nonsense. Beware, Cratchit. You have a dangerous sense of humour. Fire and damnation. Don't they know that I'm trying to run a business here? Uncle Ebenezer, I cannot tell you what a joy it is to see your happy, smiling face. Mm, it's you. A Merry Christmas, Uncle Ebenezer. God save you. God save me from Christmas. It's a lot of humbug. Christmas a humbug? Come now. I'm sure you don't mean that. Well, I'm sure that I do mean that. Merry Christmas indeed. What reason have you got to be merry? You're poor enough. What reason have you got to be miserable? You're rich enough. There is no such thing as rich enough, only poor enough. Don't be so dismal, Uncle Ebenezer. What else can I be when I live in a world full of fools babbling Merry Christmas at one another? What's Christmas but a time for finding yourself a year older and another day richer? There's nothing merry in that. If I could work my will, nephew, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Oh, God forbid, Uncle. You keep Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine. But you don't keep it. And let me leave get off me ledger. You'll ruin me binding. And let me leave it alone, sir. And be good enough to leave me alone during business hours. Yeah. Seven o'clock on Christmas Eve, that's not business hours. That's drudgery for the sake of it, and an insult to all men of goodwill. Hear, yeah, hear. Yeah. Thank you, Bob Cratchit. Another word from you, Cratchit, and you will celebrate Christmas by losing your position. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, Mr. Scrooge. You're quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into politics. You're fool enough. <laughs> Come now. Don't be angry. Dine with my wife and me tomorrow. As though you hadn't got enough problems, you went and got yourself married. Now, why in God's name did you ever do that? Because I fell in love with the lady. If there's one thing in the world more nauseating than a Merry Christmas, it's the hypocrisy of a happy marriage with some idiot lovesick female. Good afternoon, sir. My offer stands. You are always welcome, Uncle. Just like Christmas itself. I said good afternoon. Merry Christmas, Uncle. You too, Bob Cratchit, and your family. Thank you, sir. And to your good lady. Oh, and Uncle. Happy New Year. Good afternoon. Excuse me, sir, but, uh, well, it's seven o'clock, sir. Correct, Cratchit. Well, I 
don't wish to be impertinent, Mr. Scrooge, but uh, would it be too much trouble for me to have my uh, wages, sir? The trouble with you, Cratchit, is that all you think of is pleasure. Pleasure and squandering money. You'll, uh, you'll be wanting the whole day off tomorrow, I suppose. Well, if it's convenient, sir. No, sir. It is not convenient. And it is not fair. Yet if I stopped your wages for it, you'd, you'd think yourself ill-used, no doubt. And yet you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. Why, it is Christmas Day, Mr. Scrooge, and it is only once a year, sir. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. I don't pay good money for you to be forever on holiday. I appreciate your kindness, Mr. Scrooge. Uh, that's my weakness. I'm a martyr to my own generosity. I give you one Christmas day off and you expect them all. Very well, take the day. Thank you, sir. But be here all the earlier the next morning. Yes, sir, I will, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, and uh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Be gone from here and take your infernal Merry Christmas with you. I beg your pardon, sir. No offence, sir. There's another one. Fifteen shillings a week, a wife and five children. Still talks of a Merry Christmas. Scrooge and I had a lot of last-minute business to attend to. Well, my loves, which one do you like best, eh? I like that dolly in the corner. I like all of them. <laughs> Good boy. And why not one in particular? Well, he said I can't have none of them, so I might as well like them all. Tim, you are a philosopher and a gentleman, and I've got 15 shillings in my pocket. 15 shillings? 15 shillings. 15 shillings which says that the Cratchit family are going to have as good a Christmas as the Lord Mayor of London himself. Oh, I do like that dolly in the corner. Christmas children peep into Christmas windows. See a world as pretty as a dream. Christmas trees and toys. Christmas hopes and joys. Christmas puddings rich with Christmas cream. Christmas presents shine in the Christmas windows. Christmas boxes tied with pretty bows. Wonder what's inside. What delights they hide. But till Christmas morning, no one knows. You with five children, Bob, five for a shilling. Thank you, John. Won't it be exciting if it snows? Can you know? I suppose that children everywhere will say a Christmas prayer Till Santa brings their Christmas things There, my loves, I bought you the finest bird in the shop Well, for one and ten percent, maybe Christmas children live in a Christmas daydream Waiting for the magic to unfold. Wondrous things to eat every Christmas. 
Christmas treat. Rich or not, the Christmas pot of gold hypnotizes children young and old. Sweet children, oh Sweet children, oh Quite right, Mr. Cratchit. With your lot, feed apples at six a penny are the best bet. I'd rather have the dolly in a corner. I'd rather have the oranges. And 1846 is the best vintage in 20 years. At that price, it should be. <laughs> well, James. Thank you, Mr. Bissett. And a happy Christmas to you. A happy Christmas to you, sir. This will make the finest quality punch, Mr. C, and only tuppence a pint. Christmas punch? It's a cratchit speciality. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For a Christmas pudding. Scandalous. It's Papa! Oh, Here we are, my loves. Look what we've bought for you. And about time too, Bob Cratchit. We were beginning to think you'd all gone away for Christmas. <laughs> Christmas children hunger for Christmas morning. Christmas days are wonder to be home. <laughs> Young ones' dreams come true, not so young ones too. I believe that story we've been told. You're not the only ones who've been busy. Come and see what we've been up to. Christmas is for children, young and old. Sir. Uh, have we the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? It's no pleasure to me, sir, to be addressed by either of you. Uh, Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. Seven years ago this very night he died. We've no doubt his liberality is well represented by his surviving partner. <laughs> uh, Mr. Scrooge, uh, sir, uh, at this festive season of the year, sir, it is more than usually desirable uh, that we should make some slight provision for the poor and the destitute. Excellent, then I suggest you do so. You, you miss our point, sir. The poor suffer greatly at the present time. Many thousands are in want of common necessaries. Are there no prisons? Oh, indeed there are, sir. Eh? That's something there's no shortage of. And the workhouses, are they still in operation? They are, sir. I wish I could say they were not. <laughs> I'm very glad to hear it. For a moment, I was afraid that something had occurred to stop them in their useful purpose. Oh, but, but, but uh, sir, uh, 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 a few of us are endeavouring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. We choose this time, sir, because it is a time when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. What may we put you down for, sir? Nothing, sir. Ah, you wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone, sir. That is what I wish. I don't make myself merry at Christmas, and I cannot afford to make idle people merry. I have been forced to support the establishments I have mentioned through taxation, and God knows they cost more than they're worth. Those who are badly off must go there. Many would rather die than go there. If they would rather die, then they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Good night, gentlemen. Humbug! Poppycock. Balderdash. Bah! Scavengers and sycophants and flatterers and fools. Pharisees and parasites and hypocrites and ghouls. Calculating swindlers, prevaricating frauds. Perpetrating evil as they roam the earth in hordes, feeding on their fellow men, reaping rich rewards, contaminating everything they see, corrupting honest men like me. I hate people. I hate people. People.
people are despicable creatures, loathsome, inexplicable creatures, good for nothing, kickable creatures. I hate people. I abhor them. When I see the indolent classes sitting on their indolent asses, gulping ale from indolent classes, I hate people. I detest them. I deplore them. Fools who have no money, spend it, get in debt, then try to end it. Beg me on their knees, befriend them, knowing I have cash to lend them. Soft-hearted me, hard-working me, clean living, thrifty, and kind as can be. Situations like this are of interest. Me. It's Mr. Scrooge. No, it's right. Two pounds, five shillings, ladies, due before Christmas. That means today. Well, well, you see, Mr. Scrooge, sir, we've been giving more credit than usual. That's your business, madam. Mine is to collect two pounds, five shillings now. We sell things for children, sir. And at this time of the year, people can't afford it. Neither can them. I afford it, madam. However, I will... Allow you an extra week's credit. Oh, thank you. Thank sir. you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Which will only cost you a further twelve shillings. Twelve? Oh, but Mr. Well, we scarcely we... make that much in a week. If you would prefer me to confiscate your stall and its contents, which is my legal right, I will do so. But will you please, sir? You will both sign this. No. Can you give me a pair of these? Uh, certainly, Mr. Scrooge. Oh, look, there's that lovable Father Christmas again. Merry Christmas, sir. Penny for the baby, sir. Yeah. Penny for the baby, sir. I hate people. I loathe people. I despise and abominate people. Oh, no, 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 no. Life is full of cretinous wretches, earning what they're sweating and fetches. Empty minds whose pettiness stretches further than I can see. Little wonder, I hate people. And I don't care if they hate me. Now, Mr. Scrooge, please. Two pounds, seven and six, Miller. And now is as good a time as any. But I'm performing. You're always performing. Where's my money? Tomorrow for sure, Mr. Scrooge. After the Christmas morning show. It's my best day of the year. Tomorrow it will be two pounds ten, or I confiscate your puppets. All right, Mr. Scrooge. Two pounds ten. Christmas, Father Christmas, here's the meanest man in the old white world, in the old white world, you can feel it. He's a miser, he's a skinflint. Nah. He's a stingy lout, leave his stocking out for your Christmas gift, and he'll steal it. It's a shame, he's a villain, what a game for a villain to play on Christmas. Sir, no one has ever sought changed me. Hey! 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 Hey!
it's a crime. Small token of Christmas esteem with the compliments of Tom Jenkins. No. And there'll be a free can of broth, sir, every night for the coming year in gratitude for your infinite kindness in giving me another two weeks to pay. One week. Ten days? One week. One week. And put a lid on that stuff, I'll take it home. In his trust for the Christmas. Well, to know that I told you so, because I'm here to say we should all send Father Christmas. Yes. Father Christmas. Father Christmas. Father Christmas. Father Christmas. On his merry Christmas Handbag. Scrooge. It's humbug still. I'll not believe it.
her now. What do you want with me? Much. Who are you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Can you sit down? Of course I can sit down. Do so, then. Because uh, I've had a slight stomach disorder. It has undoubtedly affected my vision. You're an hallucination. Probably brought on by a, a, an undigested bit of beef, or, or a blubber mustard, or a crumb of cheese, or an old potato. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what you are. You are an old potato. You do not exist, Jacob Marley. It's humbug, I tell you. It's a lot of... Ah! but speak comfort to me. I have none to give. No? Comfort comes from other sources, Ebenezer Scrooge, and is given by other ministers than I to other kinds of men than you. When I lived, my spirit, like yours, never walked beyond the narrow limits of our counting house. But you were always a good man of business, eh? Mankind should be our business, Ebenezer. But we seldom attend to it, as you shall see. filling the sky around you. They astound you. I can tell these inhabitants of hell. Poor wretches whom the hand of heaven ignores. Beware. 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 Lest their dreadful fate be yours.
was a dream. <laughs> yes, that's what it was. A dream. <laughs> it's not <gasps> a dream, Ebenezer. For pity's sake, Marley, leave me in peace. It was for pity's sake I came here. Pity for you. I leave you. With just the tiniest chance of escaping my fate. You were always a good friend to me, Jacob. Thank you. You will be visited by three ghosts. I, I think I'd rather not. The first will appear tonight when the bell tolls one. Couldn't I take them all at once and get it over with, Jacob? The second at two o'clock and the third when the bell tolls... Three. I must go now. Marley, wait. I'm doomed to wander through the world in everlasting repentance. Remember what has passed between us. Farewell, Scrooge. Three ghosts? <laughs> Three humbugs? Past ten. Quarter to eleven. One o'clock. <laughs> Who are you? I am the spirit whose coming was foretold to you. You don't look like a ghost. Thank you. May I inquire more precisely who or what you are? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. What business brings you here? Your welfare. To be wakened by a ghost at one o'clock in the morning is hardly conducive to my welfare. Your redemption, then. Rise and walk with me. Where are we going? We are going to look at your childhood. Joy, beauty, for the 
remember these children? Of course, all of them. Look, there's my little sister. Why doesn't she wave back? She cannot see you. These are but shadows of the things that have been. I could never join in those Christmas parties. The school is not quite empty, is it? A solitary boy neglected by his family is left there still. Christmas carol outside my door last night. I should have given him something, that's all. Let us look at another Christmas. Abby, dear, dear brother, I've come to bring you home. Home with you, Fab. Father is so much kinder than he used to be. He sent me in a coach to bring you home, Abby. We're to be together all Christmas long. Go and fetch your things. Always a delicate creature. You're my breath might have withered, but she had a large heart. She had, I'll not deny it. She died a woman, and I believe had children. One child. Your nephew. Yes. There's a Christmas that you really enjoyed. Well, I'm so busy with life again. I was his apprentice. Yo ho, Ebenezer. Yo ho, Dick. Hi, ho, and shut up. No more work today, my boys. Hi, hi. It's Christmas Eve, Dick. It's Christmas, Ebenezer. Now come on, clear everything away before a man could say Jack Robinson and make some room here before Mrs. Fezziwig and the daughters arrive with the punch bowl. My word, I am a good looking chap. <laughs> Strong, too. I used to carry sacks around all day. Another other fella. I remember him, Dick Wilkins. That young fella, very attached to me, was the old year. has ever seen before. Begin! <laughs> of all the days in all the year that I'm familiar with, there's only one that's rarely fun. December the 25th. Correct! Ask anyone, call Robinson or Brown or Jones or Smith. Their favorite day and they will say. December the 25th. Correct! December the 25th. Yes. December the 25th. The dearest day in all the year. Correct. At times, we're glad to see the back of all our kin and kith. But there's a date we celebrate. December the 25th. Correct. At times, our friends may seem to be devoid of wit and pith. But all of us are humorous. December the 25th. Correct. December the 25th. Yes. December, December the 25th. The dearest day in all the year. Because I couldn't do it. December the 25th, December the 25th, December the 25th. 
There's a day in history that's more than any myth. Beyond the doubt, one day stands out. December the 20th. Correct. I, I don't, don't hear any arguments, so may I say for win? I wish that every day could be December the 20th. Man. What's so marvellous? He's merely spent a few pounds of your mortal money. Three or four, perhaps. What is that to be deserving of so much praise? You don't understand. He has the power to make us happy or unhappy, to make our work a pleasure and a burden. It's nothing to do with money. <laughs> Fezziwig's daughter. You were going to marry her, weren't you? Happiness 
this is whatever you want it to be. Happiness is a bright star. Are we happy? Yes, we are. Happiness is a clear sky. Give me wings and let me fly. Let me Whatever you want it to be. You, you were good for me. You were my day. Did all you could for me. I let you go away. I did love her, you know. Did you? Oh, yes, I loved her. Then why did you let her go? I've never been quite sure. Then let us go and see. Ebenezer? Yeah. I've come to say goodbye. I'm going away, Ebenezer. You will not see me again. Are you going to marry me? No. You'll find another love to replace me. She's much more desirable than I am. I have no idea what you're talking about. This lady here. How shall I ever understand this world? There is nothing on which it is so hard as poverty, and yet there is nothing it condemns with such severity as the pursuit of wealth. You fear the world too much, Ebenezer. All your nobler dreams that I loved have seen die off, one by one, until only the desire for gain is left. I'm not changed towards you, am I? Yes, you are. Your promise to me was made when you were poor and content to be so. You were someone else then. I was a boy. You see, your own feelings tell you that you are not what you were. I see that all too clearly. And so I can release you. Have I ever asked to be released? In words, no. But in a changed nature, yes. In everything that made my love of value to you, yes. If you met me today, you would not love me. I would, I do. Shh. I still do. I'm trying to listen. Isabel, I find it impossible to discuss personal affairs during business hours. Now, please. You see? If you weigh me by gain, I weigh very little. And so I'm not enough for you. And I release you with a full heart for the love of him you once were. Say something, you fool! Say something! You may, for a little while, have pain in this. But it will pass, and you will dismiss the recollection of it gladly as an unprofitable dream, from which it happened well that you awoke. Don't go. It's a mistake. Don't go. Be happy in the life you have chosen. Isabel. Isabel? Isabel! You fool! You fool! I let you go away. Now, I can see, now, 
hear that dream gone by? Oh, how could there be such a fool as I? I who must travel on, what hope for me? Dream where my past has gone. Live with a memory. You, my only hope. You, my only love. You, you. Spirit, remove me from this place. I can bear it no more. Stupid old fool. Getting yourself all upset over nothing. It's all in your imagination. The first one. The second, that too. I'm ready for you, Willoughby, you are! Nothing. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge, come here, Scrooge. I'm waiting for you. Or shall I come in there and get you? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Welcome, Scrooge. Is it too bright for you? Come over here, you weird little man. I am the spirit of Christmas present. Now look upon me. You have never seen the like of me before. Never? Yet how many of my brothers have you rejected in your miserable lifetime? I have never met any of your brothers, sir. You have never looked for them. Well, how many of them are there? What year is this? 1860. Then I have 1859 brothers. Each year at this time, one of us visits this puny little planet to spread some happiness and to remove as many as we can of the causes of human misery. Which is why I have come to see you, Ebenezer Scrooge. <coughs> You're a funny looking little creature. I must admit, I found it hard to believe you'd be as horrible as my brothers said you'd be. But now that I look at you, I can see they were understating the truth. 
Let me assure you that I am a man of the highest principles and the most generous spirit. Generous spirit? You? You don't know the meaning of the phrase. But you're about to find out. Now, drink this. What is it? Taste it. Mm. Mm. Do you like it? It's wonderful. I've never tasted anything like it. Of course you haven't. What is it? The milk of human kindness. There are more good things in this life, Scrooge, than you can possibly imagine. I'm sure there are. Can I have some more? Ebenezer Scrooge, the sins of man are huge. A never-ending symphony of villainy and infamy, duplicity, deceit, and subterfuge. And no one's worse than Ebenezer Scrooge. No man's a handy candidate for hell. I must admit, life sometimes has its brighter side as well. I like life. Life likes me. Life and I fairly fully agree. Life is fine. Life is good. Especially mine, which is just as it should be. I like pouring the wine, and why not? Life's a pleasure that I deny not. I like life here and now. Life and I made a mutual vow. Till I die, life and I, we'll both try to be better somehow. And if life were a woman, she would be my wife. Why? Why? Because I like life. That's all very well for you, but not for me. I hate life. Nonsense, ma'am. Why? Because life hates me. That's right. Scrooge, you're an even bigger fool than I took you for. I've never heard such a lot of self-pitying drivel. You don't even know how to live. Now you listen to me. I like life. Well, go on. I like life. That's better. Life likes me. Life likes me. Good, good. I make life a perpetual spree. Perpetual spree. Eating food. Drinking wine. Thinking who'd like the privilege to dine me. I like drinking the drink I'm drinking. That's better, Scrooge. I like thinking the thoughts I'm thinking. I like songs, I like dance, I hear music and I'm in a trance. Tra -la -la. Um, pa -pa. Chances are we shall get, get up and pray. Well, there's music and love to have in this life. Why? Why? Because I like love. <laughs> I like life. See how much we like life. What happened? What happened? What the devil am I doing in a pail of snow in the middle of the night? That's what I'd like to know. Where are we? Now, Scrooge, over there lies the lavish home of Robert Cratchit Esquire, who owes both the opulence of his surroundings and the magnificence of his Christmas celebrations to the high principles and generous spirit of his employer. <laughs> I want to look in the window. It will cost you nothing, which I'm sure will be good news for you. Will they be able to see me? No, which I feel sure will be good news for them. I could do with another of them drinks. Later. 
the time being, I think it better you see things as they really are. Pint, you can't really grumble. What a tragedy it is that Her Majesty and His Worship the Lord Mayor couldn't be with us tonight. They don't know what they're missing. <laughs> now, you try that, my love. Mmm, Bob Cratchit, you're a genius. Oh. The stuffing's ready, Father. The marriage of roast goose and sage and onion stuffing a la Cratchit is one of the culinary miracles of our day. <laughs> and a living legend throughout the length and breadth of Camden Town. <laughs> Now, the only remaining problem, my dear, is whether to put the stuffing inside the goose or the goose inside the stuffing. <laughs> but, since the ultimate intention is to put them both inside ourselves, I don't suppose it very much matters. And here they are, the one and only carol singing Cratchits, newly returned from their triumphant musical tour. How did you do, Tiny Tim? Temper tightly. Ooh, well done. Another fantastic coup by young Timothy Cratchit. The financial wizard, at only seven years of age, the youngest millionaire in the vast Cratchit Empire. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may steal a moment of your valuable time, I would ask you to drink a toast to the sparkling good health of the two gentlemen whose industry and generosity have provided our sumptuous Christmas repast. Master Timothy Cratchit. Tim. And Mr Ebenezer Scrooge. What are you trying to do? Ruin our Christmas? But his money paid for the goose, my dear. No. Your money paid for the goose, my dear. But he paid me the money. Because you earned it, my love. Fifteen shillings a week at threepence an hour. Not a penny rise in eight years. Believe me, you earned it. Well, Mr Scrooge assures me that times are hard. He's right. For you they are. But not for himself. Nonetheless, he is the founder of our feast, and we shall drink to it. Quite right. You, listen to this. The founder of our feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. He'd have indigestion for a month. Ethel, my dear, the children. It's Christmas. It needs to be Christmas, Bob, to drink to a rotten, hard, stingy old miser like Scrooge. Oh, but Ethel... You know he is, Bob. Nobody knows it better than you, my poor love. To Christmas, my dear. Children, we shall drink to your father for all the love and happiness he gives us. And to Tiny Tim for the health we wish him. And for the sake of your father, I'll even drink to that old miser, Mr Scrooge. Long life to him and to us all. A Merry Christmas to us all. Merry Christmas! God bless us. God bless us, everyone. As I said to the Lord Mayor, if Her Most Gracious Majesty is feeling bored, I said, you wheel her over to Camden Town, I said. A glass of Bob Cratchit's hot punch and a song from Tiny Tim, and we'll have her back on her regal feet in no time. <laughs> well, there's your punch. Now, where's our song, my Tiny Tim? Come on, song. Beautiful day that I dream about in a world I would love to see is a beautiful place where the sun comes out and it shines in the sky for me. On this beautiful winter's morning, if my wish could come true somehow, then the beautiful day that I dream about would be here and now. On this beautiful winter's morning if my wish could come true somehow then the 
beautiful day that I dream about would be here. And now. Okay. Oh, good. Well done. What an unpleasant child. You know, Scrooge, there are few things more nauseating to see than a happy family enjoying themselves at Christmas. Do you not agree? I think Bob Cratchit's really rather fond of me. <laughs> and so is his wife. Couldn't you tell? She doesn't really know me. That is one of the few things wherein fate has blessed her. And uh, what will become of Tiny Tim? What's this? Concern over a sick child? Have you taken leave of your senses? Don't mock me, spirit. Is the child very sick? Not that it's of any great importance to me whether he's or not, but is he? Well, of course he's sick. You mean he's seriously ill? Will he live? Well, will he? What does it matter to you, Ebenezer Scrooge? If he's going to die, then he'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. We have one more call to make. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please honor me with your undivided attention? The time has come that I know you all look forward to in this house every Christmas Eve, when I ask you to drink to the good health and long life of my celebrated Uncle Ebenezer. Oh. <laughs> Sounds to me as if he knows I'm here. Of course he doesn't. He can't see you. Harry, I've visited you every Christmas for the past five years. And to this day, I can never understand this extraordinary ritual of toasting the health of your old Uncle Ebenezer. I mean, everybody knows he's the most miserable old skinflint that ever walked God's earth. <laughs> Who's he? Oh, just a friend. <laughs> My dear Tom, it's very simple. He is indeed the most despicable old miser. Worse than you could ever possibly imagine. <laughs> you find this amusing? Believe it or not, he likes you. You see, I look at it this way. If I can wish a Merry Christmas to him, who is beyond dispute the most obnoxious and parsimonious of all living creatures, yeah. then I know in my heart that I am truly a man of good will. Oh. Wait! There's more to come. And besides, I like old Scrooge. What did I tell you? Truly I do. I can't help feeling that hidden somewhere deep inside that loathsome old carcass of his, there's a different man fighting to get out. Oh, careful, Harry. He may be even worse than the one you know. Oh, God forbid, Tom. <laughs> anyway, that's the reason I ask him to come here every Christmas. In the forlorn hope that one day he might pick up enough goodwill to raise his clerk's wages by five shillings a week. Oh, yeah. God knows it's high time he did. Oh. <laughs> He's free with other people's money. All right, Harry, that's enough. I refuse to have Christmas haunted by Uncle Ebenezer. <laughs> we'll have some dancing and some music. Then we'll play some splendid parties. There's a charming new game called the Minister's Cat. It's very funny. You'll all end up getting very angry when you lose. As for you, nephew, if you were in my will, I'd disinherit you. Scrooge! Come over here. You need some more of this. <laughs> Raise my clerk's wages.
so stupid. He's always been stupid. Then stop yawning when I'm talking to you. What next? Hen. 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 The minister's cat is a Quickly. naughty cat. The minister's cat is a noble no, cat. The minister's cat is a nebulous cat. The minister's cat is a nasty cat. Oh, 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 no, 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 well, thank you, my boy. What a wonderful evening. That minister's cat day. I thought I was rather good at it. Good night. Good night. Thank you. I can honestly say I haven't enjoyed Christmas as much as this since I was a young apprentice at old Fezziwig so, so many years ago. Yes. What Christmases we used to have in those days. Fantastic they were. He had this daughter. Reminded me a little bit of your mother, she did. Her name was Isabel. Oh, oh Isabel. Happiness is standing beside me. I could see her. She could see me. Happiness is whatever you want it to be. Yes, Scrooge, I have brought you home. You're not going. My time upon this little planet is very brief. I must leave you now. But we still have so much to talk about, haven't you? There is never enough time to do or say all the things that we would wish. The thing is to try to do as much as you can in the time that you have. Yes, but... Remember, Scrooge, time is short. And suddenly, you're not there anymore. No, wait. Don't go. Don't leave me. Where are you? Why is it so dark? I can't see. 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 Oh, my God. What am I doing here? Oh. I'm in bed. That's what I'm doing here. This is where I'm supposed to be in the middle of the night. Was I dreaming again? I must have been. That giant. Be mad. There are no giants. There are no ghosts. <sighs> Am I in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? And you are to show me shadows of the things that will happen in the time before us. Is that so, Spirit? Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any apparition I have seen. But as I know, your purpose is to do me good. And as I hope to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear you company. Will you speak to me? The night is waning fast, and I know that Time is precious to me. Lead on, spirit, lead on! Hey, only friends. 
shining as bright as the happy thoughts the mere mention of the name Scrooge brings to our minds. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today because we are united by a common bond. Yeah. Yeah. Namely, our feelings of gratitude to Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah. to find the words to describe the true depth of our feeling towards him. Is this the future? All right, my friends, all right. I That's Tom Jenkins, the hot soup man. We are all he owes me six pounds. I must say, it looks uncommonly happy for someone so deep in debt. All these people owe me money. They love me and I never knew. Kindly hold down your emotions, if you please. Now, we are all deeply moved. Yeah. And those of us what has been in debt to Mr. S over all these years will never forget what a rare and beautiful thing he has just done for us all, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? And three cheers for Mr. Scrooge! What did I do? What did I do? Whatever it was, it has made him truly happy, and I am the cause. My friends, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I shall remember this moment until my dying day. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. May I say, in all humility, I have laboured unceasingly all my life Yay! to be worthy of this moving demonstration of your feelings towards me. Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all the people who have assembled here, I would merely like to mention, if I may, Yay! that our unanimous attitude is one of lasting gratitude for what our friend has done for us today. <laughs> and therefore, I would simply like to say... <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. I may sound up for Dutch, but my delight is such. I feel as if a losing war's been won for me. And if I had a flag, I'd hang me flag out to add a sort of final victory touch. But since I left me flag alone, I'll simply have to say thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very, very, very much. <laughs> Much. Thank you very much. And that's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. It sounds a bit bizarre, but things the way they are, I feel as if another life's begun for me. And if I had a cannon, I would fire it to add a sort of celebration touch. But since I left me cannon at home, I simply have to say.
you very much. Thank you very much. That's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. <laughs> the future looks all right. In fact, it looks so bright. I feel as if the fun is seen to start for me. And if I had a drummer... Colour hurts my eyes. I mustn't show weak eyes to your father when he gets home. It must be near his time. I've passed it. But I think he's walked a little slower these last few evenings. I've known him walk with Tiny Tim on his shoulder very fast indeed. But he was light to carry. Well, it was no trouble. No trouble. Where is Tiny Tim? Take me to him. Let's go now, my little fellow. I promised your mother I'd help her with the Christmas dinner. I'll come and see you again tomorrow. Same time. Tiny Tim. Spirit, you've shown me a Christmas yet to come that mingles great happiness with great sadness. But what is to become of me? I beg you. I've seen the error of my ways. I will repent. Truly, I will repent. I should have thought it was obvious. 
Julius. I heard you were coming down today, so I thought I'd come to greet you, show you to your quarters. Nobody else wanted to. That, that's very civil of you, my lady. I, I, I am dead, I say. As a coffin. Did you indeed? You may find your office here rather small, but not, I trust, unfamiliar. Office? Your activities in life were so pleasing to Lucifer that he has appointed you to be his personal clerk. A singular honor. You will be to him, so to speak, what Bob Cratchit was to you. That's not fair! It's... it's... Diabolical, I must confess. I find it not altogether unamusing. Here we are, my dear Ebenezer. Your office. thought it might make you drowsy. You'll be the only man in hell who's chilly. Watch out for the rats. They nibble things. Rats? Oh. I almost forgot. I knew there was something. They apologize that your chain wasn't ready for your arrival. It's so big, they had to take on extra devils at the foundry to finish it. It's even bigger than I thought it would be. Oh, here it is now. to change that I will not be the man I was. I'll begin again. I will build my life. I will live to know that I fulfilled my life. I'll begin today. Throw away the past. And the future I build will be something that will last. I will take the time I have left to live 
and I will give it all that I have left to give. I will live my days for my fellow men, and I live in praise of that moment when I was able to begin again. I will start anew. I will make amends. And I'll make quite certain that the story ends on a note of hope, on a strong amen. And I thank the world and remember when I was able to to know if they've sold a prize turkey that was hanging up in the window. Not the big one, the enormous one. What, you mean the one as big as me? Oh, what a wonderful boy. So witty is a pleasure to talk to him. Yes, that's the one. It's still there. It is. Go and buy it. What's that? <laughs> Here's two sovereigns. Go and wake up the butcher and tell him to open his shop. Meet me there in ten minutes. Be holding that turkey and I'll give you a half a crown. Go on, run. Run, run. Run. <laughs> oh, what a lovely boy. I think I'm going to like children. Now, that's what I call a turkey. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Come on, dear boy. Let's go and open the toy shop. Thank you. Merry Christmas. And I'll have that. Uh, and some of those. And uh, the hobby horse. And then some flutes. And, and some trum trumpets. Uh, uh, and, and, and that doll. And some bows and arrows. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. And I, I must have a cricket bat. And, and these. And these. And the horse and the spinning top. And the piano. And, and all those dolls. Four of them. Yes. Oh, I like that. Oh, and this beautiful coat. And several kites. And the horse. And these boats. And some of these. Oh, oh, boy, I'll have that. Oh. Now, how much is all this? Oh. Um, oh. Well, never mind. Here are some sovereigns and you can keep the change. Oh, thank you, Mr. Scrooge. And I shall require the services of several small boys to help to transport these delightful objects to their destination. And each boy shall receive a half a crown. Half a crown, yes, <laughs> Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge, what has happened? What's happened? It's perfectly simple, Pringle. I've discovered that I like life. <laughs> I like life. Life likes me. Life and I very fully agree. Life is fine. Life is good. Especially mine, which is just as it should be. I like pouring the wine and why not? 
Life's a pleasure that I deny not. <laughs> I like life here and now. Life and I made a mutual vow. Till I die, life and I, we both try to be better somehow. And if life were a woman, she would be my wife. <laughs> Because I like life. Oh, look, it's flying. No, let me, let me, let me. I like life. Life likes me. I made life a perpetual spree. Eating food, drinking wine, thinking food like the privilege to dine me. I like living the life of pleasure. Pausing oh, only to take my leisure. I like songs, I like dance, I hear music and I'm in a trance. Tra la la, oh papa, chances are I shall get up and prance. <laughs> Where there's music and laughter, happiness is right. Why? Why? Because I like dying. Ebenezer! Oh, oh, Merry Christmas to you, my dear nephew, and to your enchanting wife. We were just on our way to your house with some presents. These are for you, from an old fool who deeply regrets the Christmases gone by that he might have shared with you. And this is for you, my dear, a sort of belated wedding present. Oh, Uncle Ebenezer, thank you. Christmas lunches, sharp at three. May we expect you? You may. I'll be there. Oh, you are a pretty girl. <laughs> I like songs, I like dance. Those are for you, my boy. 
Thank you. And, and these, Bob Cratchit, are for you and your good lady. I must leave you now, as you can imagine. It's a very busy day for me, and I have many more calls to make. <laughs> ah! I almost forgot. This is for you. You didn't steal it, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't steal it. It's a present for you to keep a Merry Christmas, Tiny You still don't recognize me, do you, Bob Cratchit? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, you, your father Christmas? <laughs> no. Ah! It's Mr. Scrooge. He's gone mad. It's, it's all right, my dear. There's, there's nothing to be frightened of. <gasps> no, I haven't gone mad. And on Monday, when your salary will be doubled... Doubled? He has gone We'll mad. sit together and discuss how I could help your family to start with. We'll find the right doctors to decide it's him well, and we will get him well, you know, Bob. Yes, I believe you. I believe anything. <laughs> and may this be the merriest Christmas of all our lives. Tom Jenkins, Tom Jenkins. About that six pounds you owe me. You agreed to give me a few more days, Mr. Scrooge. I just need You can more... keep it. It's my Christmas present to you. God bless you this Christmas day, Mr. Scrooge. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. It sounds a bit bizarre, but things the way they are. I feel as if another life's begun for me. And that goes for anyone else who owes me money. You can keep it as of this day. All my debts are Nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. It isn't every day. Good fortune comes my way. I never thought the future would be fun for me. <laughs>
Hello. I don't know whether you can hear me, old Jacob Marley, and I don't know whether or not I imagined the things I saw, but between the pair of us, we, we finally made a Merry Christmas, didn't we? I have to leave you now. Must go and get ready. I'm going to have Christmas dinner with my family. <laughs> <laughs>